Let me ask you this then. You talked about raising your son. And until he gets to secondary school, when he's got male peers, then all the good lessons you teach him will be a great bedrock. But there is this toxicity and pornography, which is in the palm of everyone's hand. And so women, girls and boys think that something that is designed for masturbation is real. That, you know, a girl should send a picture of herself naked to a boy in her class. And the thing is that clearly these boys are going to get them to show and brag to their friends. But girls still feel this pressure. There was a story in the UK that girls, um, so they go to secondary school at 12 years old and a 12 year old was getting on average 10 requests from her classmates for nude or semi-nude photos a day. Um, oh, okay. Uh, you need to run, Gregory. No worries. Um, thanks a lot for All being right. here. Yeah, and I was getting some inquiries, and I, I got to get uh, get back to it. And uh, no worries. Uh, Thank you for your conversation. Input. What is there anything you'd like to say before you go? Uh, just you know, I'm. <laughs> It, it, it's been a very interesting conversation. And, and I say that because I feel like been, on either side of the spectrum, it's been appalling on one end and encouraging on the other. And so I would, uh, and I think that's just a, a microcosm of what we're trying to do here because so many things that are happening are happening every day across many platforms and we need to be aware of them and women need to be aware that it's not their fault. Um, on the other end, there is hope. There are some solutions. And, and there are some opportunities to, to get into better situations. Um, and hopefully social me too can continue to help women get there. And so Excellent. I would encourage people for that. Thank you very much, Gregory. As my co-founder of the movement, you're very much appreciated. Speak right. soon. Take care. Okay. Go already. Go on. Get out. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll uh, we'll record for a bit longer and then and then let you girls uh, go. Obviously, your child is demanding of your attention, which is lovely. Um, <laughs> so there's a couple of questions that just occurred to me about raising children. I used to coach in primary schools, and. It's probably the case in the UK. Well, no, I'm no, I made that right. I made this sweeping statement before, which isn't true. But there is a fairly large number of single parents and single mothers, because it's the father that doesn't put in, just buggers off, doesn't uh, uh, or denies knowledge. Now, these women will go without food to buy the child a PlayStation because even though the man might have been doing horrible things as a reason why the relationship broke down, they feel guilty. Mm. And so that, I would suggest, codes at the opposite end of the spectrum to what you're doing Olivia because if the boys experience of women is the that they always give them what they want yeah. when that gets to adolescence that same expectation must be there what are we going to do about that So I think from my point of view, um, the teachers, if a person, for example, is in school, then the teacher also plays a big role because we as parents aren't there for that time, which is a long time. For example, sometimes eight hours a day, mm. we're not around. So we can't monitor them every single second of the day. I can only be plugged in, for example, when I'm at home. So for that time that he's at school, I'm not going to have control, nor do I know what is happening. Unless the teacher obviously informs me, for example, because he's actually starting 
pre-primary, like pre-elementary school already. Mm. So his teacher is mm. very proactive when it comes to if there's an issue, she'll contact me and tell me, look, um, we can sort this out. We need to talk about something. She'll call a meeting. And I think that's where teachers are proactive. For example, even the school that I went to, even though it was a public school, mm. the teachers were very on board and involved with the kids. So if there was certain issues, they would immediately try to address it, for example, before it gets way out of hand. Yeah. So yeah. teachers are very important in that way because parents can't be there all the time. No. For example. And Asuya, what um what's your perspective on on that idea that being a so it comes from love and it comes from guilt. And when a woman gives her son everything that he wants without question, I think I think it must lead to incorrect assumptions about about engaging with women. Is that true of your experience? Um, okay. Um, so I have seen my. I'll just tell uh, as an example of my sister. My sister's now her kid. He's uh, he's into he's I think uh, seven years old. My sister, so she's also working. Okay, she's a working person. But one certain time, one incident happened, like in school, you know, uh, because kids whenever they carry some tiffins and all, you know, they they share it. They don't eat, and uh, it happens like. Uh, she used to she used to be very care, careful about it. He should eat it properly, but mm. he he cannot eat. He he because because he's so I'm like you know there are some kids you know who don't talk so much, you know he's very you know humble and not so much talkative and so so this other kids I mean whoever even they have got so many caretakers who are looking after the kids you know I am talking about. The one uh, he, he was when he was started going to the daycare schools, you know, mm -hmm. daycares. Yeah, I mean before the nursery. Uh, so that time there are so many problems happen, and he don't get to eat properly. And and whenever he comes home, whenever she come and see that he all he's always gets sick. He always gets sick, sick because because he don't eat properly. He's not oh, getting wow. the proper nutrition nutritions you know so doctor he used to take the doctor and doctor say that where uh, where i uh, did you keep your kid alone somewhere you are not giving him time are you not with him then she said yeah i am with him but i am because i have to go to work mm -hmm. so i put him in daycare but this there sometimes you know the daycare people they are they are not so much careful about it no. Because there's so many kids are there, they don't, they cannot handle it, and uh, the system is not proper. It's there's no discipline proper, you know, the mm -hmm. the way they are handling those things. So there's so many things happen, you know, uh, for raising a kid, it's very difficult thing. I know yeah. I have, yeah, it's a very difficult for a mother, and mostly the uh, when the kid is very small, I mean young, you know. Uh, that time it, it has mother has got so many problems and that's why there so you can see there's so many mothers they quit their jobs mm. 